Isn't it crazy that Wildlands is a seven year old game this year and yet still serves as a benchmark for open world tactical shooters? Eyes in a small group of tangos. Alrighty guys, Drax here and yes, we are talking about Ghost Recon Wildlands in this one. One of my favorite open world games of all time, I've got to say. This game released back in 2017 and I can remember playing the beta thinking this is basically perfect. It was a no-brainer to me. I even pre-ordered Wildlands, something I don't do too often with games. But it didn't seem to click with a lot of my friends back then. And I couldn't understand why, so I played it mostly solo for a good few months. A couple friends eventually did join me though and I played through the campaign for a second time with them. And now again in 2024, a few friends are finding Wildlands to once again be a game they can really sink their teeth into. They are absolutely loving it. So I thought why not make a video and share my thoughts on what makes Wildlands one of the best open world games for me and so many others. Starting at the beginning, I think this is more of a negative point for the game actually overall, but the uh, gunplay, the weapon mechanics. Uh, guns feel good, but any suppressor makes nearly every weapon sound the same. And without a suppressor, they do sound better with their individual sounds. But you do have this huge drop off on all weapons. All of them are very low velocity. This is common in a lot of video games for balance, but snipers generally feel lackluster. Sniping in this game isn't that great. Don't get me wrong, you can still pull off some nice shots. But the characteristics of snipers, especially that velocity, is nowhere near close to realistic. Great point, the successor to Wildlands, I hear it is a lot better in this aspect and I've watched some videos now and I would say it definitely is re with regards to the weapons. And as for fighting enemies on Wildlands, on advanced it could be super difficult at times, especially against the Unidad forces uh, when you don't use the stealth mechanics that are built into the game. And I do think that's a plus. I like using the stealth and it does encourage you. When you think about the word ghosts, which they talk about a lot, the special forces, you surely think something that doesn't get seen too often or, you know, can't be seen. On extreme difficulty, on the other hand, which is encouraged a lot in Wildlands later on in the game, it just seems to be aimbot for the enemies. Like you see a cartel member with Uzis in their hand and they beam you out the air without missing a shot whilst you're parachuting down. Or they quickly nail you with a 360 headshot all of a sudden. So in that aspect, I don't think they quite nailed it. But with stealth, I do think they've done really well. And mostly you have the single bullet that kills when you haven't been spotted and every headshot is lethal. Close range takedowns also can be greatly rewarding. Although maybe not the best animations for the takedowns either. However, the game does have great weapon customization you can go about the map collecting parts there's different weapons and you can use the tier system to get more weapons and customization as you go along there's also these uh prestige boxes and other little boxes that you unlock and you can unlock them just from doing those daily side challenges which i'll get to in a little bit now i think it somehow balances out to the more good side overall in the gunplay aspect the uh, gun mechanics it still creates a fun weapon use system without the characteristics you would recognize from the weapons normally or maybe throughout the newer titles. And although it doesn't shine in this aspect, I still think Wildlands is of a good standard and is fun to use. How about the variety of the game? I think this game has great variety. To get your missions, you need to find mission intel. The intel side of the things is basically the same. The missions are so varied that going through them again, I forgot how good these were. Like, they're so they're ahead of so many other games. You have extraction type missions, assassinations, pure stealth, pure destruction, defense of an area, and even have the theft of enemy vehicles. There's, there's more, I'm sure of it, but not many games offer such a varied mission lineup. You have the objective, you can do it your way, you can approach from wherever you want. And you could even jump from a helicopter every mission and parachute into bases if that was your choice. There's varied voice lines that change based on the region, on what is going on in proximity to you. When certain things happen, or sometimes especially when you're playing solo, one of the other guys on your team just wants to tell a short story. There's even voice lines like, my 11 year old daughter could beat this guy up, 
which helps build on the characters that you're with. You know, at that point, he's a family guy. An enemy variety is, of course, mostly the same, being either Santa Blanca Cartel or Unidad Forces. But what I do like is the enemy behavior, especially at night, as certain enemies will go to sleep in their camps, leaving them more open for attack. Some, of course, do stay on guard, but with less people on the watch, infiltration is easier, and that really adds to the stealthy way of playing. But you're going to want to choose to go in at night quite often if you want to add the stealth element to your gameplay. All this ties into the amazing story. Emotionally and politically driven from the start, a former US Marine and undercover special agent Ricky Sandoval is tortured and executed after having his cover blown whilst working under El Sueño, head of the Santa Blanca cartel. Around about the same time, the US Embassy was also bombed at La Paz in Bolivia, and this causes the American government to move on the now-marked terrorist cartel. Operation Kingslayer is a go, with Ricky Sandoval's friend, Karen Bowman at the helm, and a four-man team led by Core Sign Nomad. Now, as I remember it, Ubisoft had real Special Forces people helping with the writing of this game. And you've got to say that that is, of course, going to help in terms of authenticity to the story and the actions of the Ghost team. It also had people travel to Bolivia to soak up the atmosphere and make sure all that gets added to the game. This all shows throughout the world as you meet and see different characters and the people, the NPCs, just going about their lives. For replayability of the story, basically you can make the game as easy or as hard as you want to. It can go from an arcade open world shooter to ultra real life spec ops milsim. Especially if you mod the game, which I know quite a few have done. And there is also the ghost mode, which really ups the difficulty. I think there's even permadeath on that mode if you choose to have it on. But a more simple way to make the game more immersive and add that replayability that I find is just to up the difficulty and remove the elements of the HUD. So you have to take your time with missions. You'll be amazed how much harder just removing that mini map and the enemy markers makes the game on any difficulty there's also in-game daily challenges that offer objectives for in-game rewards completing the missions or objectives in specific ways or harder difficulties i found these quite engaging and a plus for the replayability of wildlands once again let's not forget you can play the whole game solo you can play the whole game co-op or a mix of both there is not many games that allow you to co-op anymore especially not in this fashion where you can freely join and travel around the map together. This also adds to missions feeling different. I can attest that sometimes missions are easier with the AI guys, but other, especially hotter missions where enemies are swarming you or attacking your position, a few players can be of greater benefit. But how about where this all takes place? Bolivia. Yes, you are there to destabilize the cartel and take off his head. But throughout, you'll find yourself immersed in its world, in its people, and the Bolivian culture. So let's talk about what mostly appeals to me, I think, and that's the open world. Bolivia is an amazingly beautiful place in real life, and I'm glad to say in game too. Now, we do have limitations of graphics available in game, of course. And when I first played on a GTX 970, it didn't look too bad, although it was, I was probably playing on medium to high at the time. Now I do have a 3080 and I'm able to max the graphics out. I turn off depth of field and motion blur, but with everything else on ultra, I have to say this game still lives up to the expectations of a modern game, especially graphically. Just going back and playing again with the higher graphics settings has definitely added something for me in terms of enjoyment. It's not a bad game for screenshots, that is for sure. On top of that, there are so many different places and people. NPCs have work schedules and sleep patterns. Assets relating to buildings are reused, but very well. And a lot of places have clearly been crafted specifically for missions. And there's also specific places that you would even notice and recognize if you visited Bolivia. So much attention to detail throughout. People who live there or have visited even say how close some locations represent what is actually there. In this sense, it does really feel like the devs cared about the game when they were making it. And I feel this is true in many Ubisoft created worlds, just like across the Assassin's Creed series, which I'm personally a big fan of. 
And Wildlands, they've recreated Bolivia in such a way that despite the narrative of the game, you can still appreciate the beauty and culture on show here. Even when compared to its successor title, Breakpoint, Wildlands to me looked and felt better. And I have to be honest here, after so many hours in Wildlands, Breakpoint felt like a step backwards for me when I played the open beta for that one. So I didn't actually buy that game. Maybe it's just Bolivia over Aurora. I think the map was called in Breakpoint. Overall, I just think Bolivia is just a better setting for a game like this, and it adds to the enjoyment. Although I will say, with all the changes that they've made to Breakpoint in the past few years, and after playing Wildlands again, me and my friends might go on to give Breakpoint another go, see how it feels now. But as for Wildlands, I think it's always going to have a special place in my gaming memory as one of the best open world shooter experiences. And for anyone who didn't give it a go, I think it still holds up in 2024. Now, I've seen a few things about a new Ghost Recon game coming out soon. So I'm looking forward to hearing more about that one. I'm hoping once again, it's going to be open world. It's going to be a tactical shooter of some kind. Follow the previous path of these games and hopefully make them even better and more enjoyable. But for those of you that are big fans of Wildlands, let me know what you love about it most in the comments. How do you like to play the game? I hope you have enjoyed this video. Drop a like if you did and subscribe if you want to see more like this one. As always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye for now. Let's get this done. Perry Toto Saldra Pien.